This budget versus actuals dashboard is something I use in pretty much every board meeting. It provides so much insight into what's happening in the business and how that compares against what I thought would happen. And that's why I created this video over here. But creating this information in Excel isn't really so intuitive. Unless of course, you follow this video. I'm gonna show you how you can create the same dashboard using one of my favorite Excel tools, Power Query. Just watch how simple it is when we do it together. All right, so here I'm in my Excel file. And if you wanna grab this file, you can just check the description. It's the first link. I'll also include a guide that goes over what we're doing step-by-step step in case anything here gets missed. And as you can see, I have a budget tab over here, which showcases my full budget for all 2025 for my full profit and loss. And then I have this rolling tab where I actualized the first quarter of the year. And then I still have these projections for the remainder of the year for my profit and loss. And then finally, we have this budget versus actuals dashboard over here, which we're gonna complete together. And I actually got this via our add-in model Wiz, where you can get a bunch of different finance and accounting templates and dashboards. So I just clicked over here on Excel and I chose over here, this budget versus actuals. Watch what happens whenever I click download, it'll shoot directly into my file. And if you have a QuickBooks Online account, you could actually connect your data directly and download a bunch of different QuickBooks Online reports. So let's build this dashboard together. I'm just gonna delete this. And in order to be able to link in our budget and actual information, I'm gonna use Power Query to unpivot our data. Now, if you've never used Power Query to unpivot data, I'm about to blow your mind. And usually whenever people think of Power Query, they go to data and when they hit table range, Notice that automatically Excel is trying to convert my data to a table. Now tables are great, but they have their time in place. And in this case, I don't wanna convert it to a table cause it's gonna make the structure very rigid and that won't be ideal for me continuing to retain this format. So instead I'm just gonna select the data from December, 2025 through here. And I'm gonna click on formula define name and I'm gonna call this budget as such. Okay, now let me do the same thing for the rolling as well. I'm just gonna select all of this. And when I click on name manager, I'll then click on new and I'll call this actual. Okay, now we can start with either of these loading into Power Query. I'm just gonna load the actual. So I'm gonna click on data. And now when I click on from table or range, the Power Query editor is going to load. It's not going to convert it to a table. And now that I'm in the Power Query editor, let's make a few adjustments. So first, as you can see, we actually want row one as our headers. So under home, I can just click on use first rows as headers as such. Now you'll notice that we have all of our dates going across horizontally, which is really common in a financial report. But if instead I had this going across vertically, where I had the dates in one column and the values in another column, it would be a lot easier to manipulate. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold down shift, I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna click unpivot other columns as such. All right, now let's just rename this as date and I can call this over here account. And now as you can see for every single date for each account in grouping, I have the value that corresponds to it. So I just wanna now parse out the dates as it shows here. So I'm gonna to go to transform and under date, I'm gonna click on parse as such. And now I have my data. Now, lastly, you'll see that we have null values from the summary grouping on every total row over here. We don't really need these total rows. When we pull in our data, we may double count if we include them. So I'm just gonna click this dropdown and uncheck on null. And now I only have accounts that have information with the summary grouping. All right, so now that I just filtered the rows, you'll notice that over here under the applied steps, I can see each step that Excel took from when I first loaded in my data until all of these transformations took place. So I'm just gonna do one last thing. I want to eventually combine these two tables on top of each other. And I wanna remember which table was my actual and which was my budget. So I'm just gonna click on custom column over here. And now I'm gonna write type. And then the type is going to be actual, which I'll wrap in quotations and I'll press okay. Perfect. Now I have a column that says actual everywhere. I'm ready to duplicate these steps for my budget but I don't really need to go through all of these steps one by one. There's a much quicker way. I'm gonna right click over here and then I'm gonna click on duplicate and let's rename this as budget. Now, if I click on home and then the advanced editor, 
I'll be taken to Power Query's advanced editor where all this code is written in M. Each time that I made an action, Excel automatically wrote this code. So I can just find every instance of the word actual and replace it with the word budget. And it's really just these two instances when I loaded in the named range and when I added in that column. Now I'll click on done. Perfect. Now we have our two tables side by side. The last thing that we need to do is we need to append all of this data together. Now appending is when you take two tables and stack them on top of each other. So I'm gonna click this drop down, append queries as new. And my first table is gonna be the budget. The second one is going to be the actuals. Let's click okay. Perfect. And now we have the data for our budget as well as for our actual over here. So let me rename this as combined. Now I'm going to click close and load too, because I don't want to load all of these back as tables. Instead, I'm going to first create a connection and then under data queries and connections, I'm going to right click combine and I'm going to click load too. And this time I'm going to load it to a new worksheet as a table. Awesome. So now I have all of my data loaded in as a table and transformed via Power Query. And this is so cool because the data is now tethered to these two tabs. So watch, if I just go to budget and let's say for sales, I'm gonna write 200,000 over here and change it. Well, now if I come to this table, you'll see that it still shows the old value. But if I click data, refresh, watch what happens. So that just changed. Now it shows 2000 as such. So I'm just gonna undo that because I don't wanna overwrite my budget, but now you can see the actual power of Power Query each month as I make this adjustment over here and I paste in a new month of actuals into my rolling forecast, my budget versus actuals report is automatically gonna update with these transformations. Okay, now let's build our budget versus actuals dashboard. And now that we have our table in this structure, it's actually really easy to do that. And before I write my formulas, let me just show you one other thing that I have in this tab. See, I have a local named range called start date and end date. And if I click formula name manager, you'll see that under the scope, you can see that I have this just for budget versus actuals tab. This is really helpful whenever I create dashboards, I'll have a start date and end date as a local named range so that when I create other dashboards, if I have another local named range, it won't interfere with this one over here. So now let's write our formula. And for that, we're gonna be utilizing some ifs. And it's actually pretty simple. I'm gonna write equals some ifs. And now for the sum range, I'm gonna to go to our combined and I'm gonna select all of the values by pressing control and space. Now I get to write all of my conditions. The first condition is that the type is equal to the column that I'm in. So I'm just going to lock this over here at the row level. Okay, the second condition is gonna be that the summary grouping is equal to the summary grouping that I have over here. And this time I'm gonna lock just the column. Now my third condition is really two conditions where the date needs to be greater than or equal, and I'm gonna write that in quotations, to the start date. And then once again, the date needs to be less than or equal, and I'm again gonna put that in quotations along with an ampersand to the end date. All right, now if I close the parentheses and I hit enter, it should populate. Now, is this correct? Did I budget 419.829? Well, let's double check in our budget file over here. Let's check Q1. And if I highlight 419.829. Perfect. So now I can copy this information to all of these other sections. So I'm just gonna hold down Control C and I'll press Control V and I'll do the same thing as such over here. Excellent. Now let's create our calculated measures. So for gross profit, I'm gonna say revenue minus cost of goods sold over here. And for gross margin, I'm gonna say if error, in case there is a zero, gross profit divided by revenue, otherwise return zero as such. Okay, all right, now for total OPEX, I'll just click equals and enter. For net operating income, I'm gonna take gross profit and subtract out total OPEX. For net other income, I'm gonna take other income minus other expense. And then finally, for net income, I'm going to take net operating income plus net other income. Now, if I set everything up correctly, I should be able to just select this entire range, press Control C and copy to pull in my actuals. Check it out. It looks like it's working. So again, let's double check 362649. If I check in my rolling over here for Q1, 362649. And let's also double check our net income, 102142 equals 102142. Awesome. 
Now let's populate the dollar variance column. So I'm going to write equals. And like we said, if we beat our revenue projections, that's a good variance. If we miss, that's a bad variance. So I'm going to write actual minus budget and I'll click OK. And I'm going to do the same thing for all of my income accounts. So I'm going to copy over here and then I'm going to just paste the formula so that we don't overwrite the formatting. And I'm going to continue with net operating income and net other income and net income. Awesome. Now let's do the opposite if it is an expense account. So cost of goods sold, this time we're gonna take budget minus actuals over here. And because we had higher cost of goods sold, well, that's a bad thing. So that shows as a negative. And now I'm gonna continue to do that for all of these accounts. And again, I'll just paste the special as the formula. A good keyboard shortcut is Alt H V F. Now over here, Alt H V F once more. And now let's just copy in this formula. Alt H V F in order to paste this as such. Okay, so we can see that our net income was only 102, 142 compared to 279, 488 that we projected, which is a bad variance of negative 177, 346. Someone's gonna be in trouble when they run these numbers. All right, now let's populate the percentage variance. And like we spoke about, we're gonna do an if error in case there is a zero, and I'm gonna divide this amount by the absolute of this amount over here. And then in the event that there is an error, we'll return a zero. Awesome. Now I'm just, again, going to come in and paste as formulas. Okay, and now we have our table all populated. The last thing that we need to do is add in these beautiful donut charts. So for that, I first need to create a table over here to get the values that'll tie to those donut charts. So I'm gonna populate values if there's a positive variance as well as a negative variance so that I could show different colors for each. And then I wanna also create the inverse of each value so that I know how much to shade in gray when I'm done. Then over here will be the text that we use for the dollar variance and here will be for the percentage variance. And this should be pretty simple. So I'm gonna write equals X lookup and my lookup value is going to be our revenue. Now I'm gonna just lock the row and the lookup array is going to be right over here. And I'm going to return the corresponding information over here. And let's close the parentheses. Perfect. Now I want to actually reserve this line only for positive variances. So I'm just going to wrap this around an if function and say if it's greater than zero, then return this value over here. Otherwise, just return two quotation marks as such. And let's hit enter. Okay, now for the B variance, I'm gonna take the same thing over here. And once again, I'm gonna say, if it's greater than zero, then return one minus that value, otherwise return just the quotations. So now I'm gonna take this formula and I'm gonna copy it again, this time for the negative, and I'm gonna make a few tweaks. I'm gonna say, if it's less than zero, then return the absolute of this X lookup, otherwise return nothing. And then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna re say return one minus that amount, otherwise return zero. Okay, almost there. Now to get the dollar variance, I'm just gonna again write X lookup and I'm gonna select this value here in this lookup range and this variance range as such. And let's just lock that. Awesome. Okay, and now lastly, just to get the percentage variance, I'm gonna select this over here I'm gonna copy and paste that as such, and I'll drag it for the percentage to showcase the percentage hit or miss. Okay, now this looks good. I wanna take it one step further though, and I wanna write the word miss if it's a bad variance and hit if it's a good variance. So I'm just gonna press Control-1, then I'm gonna click on Custom, and now that I'm in Custom Formatting, I could write 0% hit if it's positive, then I'll write a semicolon, and then I'm gonna write minus 0% quotation miss. And then if there's no variance, I'm just gonna write no variance. Excellent. So now what's really cool is that this is a formula, but there's text included on it because of custom formatting. All right, now if everything worked correctly, I should be able to just copy this information all the way to the right and boom, check it out. Everything is populating correctly. Okay, so now we have everything we need to create our donut charts. So for that, I'm just gonna select all this information here. I'll click on the insert ribbon, then this drop down next to the pie chart, and I'll click on donut. Now, as you can see, I have all four series and my title. So first I'm gonna set all of the B accounts, which is easy. I know that I want that to be 
a light gray. So I'm just gonna select this over here with no outline. And I'll do the same thing for the negative variance. Awesome. Now, if it's a negative variance, I want it to be my yellow color of my brand. So I'm gonna right click, more fill colors, custom, and change this as such. Okay. And I could also right click to make sure that I have no outline. And then for my positive variance, I'm gonna right click. And again, I'll click on more fill colors and I'll paste in this special hex code from my brand and click okay. Awesome, now the last thing, just to touch this up, I'm gonna right click over here. And I'm gonna click on format data series. Now for the donut hole size, I'm gonna drag that all the way to the right as such. And then for the actual chart, I want no border, no fill. And we also don't need these to showcase anymore. Perfect. Now watch what I'm gonna do, this is key. See, if I take this information and I let's say make it small as such, if I then copy this information and I drag it to the right for now my gross profit, look at what happens when I do that. All of the styling, all of the hard work that I did just got erased, which is really frustrating. But thankfully, there's a way that you can solve for that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this over here. And before I copy this over, I'm gonna right click the data and I'm gonna click save as template. And I'll call this budget versus actuals donut and I'll save. So what's really neat is that Excel is now gonna retain the actual styling of this donut whenever I copy and paste it. So watch, I'm gonna copy and paste it as such. I'll bring this information over here. And when I drag it, again, we know that the color is gonna change, but when I right click and click on change series type, I can now click on templates and click on budget versus actuals donut. And there we go, the information just copied over. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for my other two metrics real quickly. So I'll copy and paste. And now I have all my donut charts. The last thing remaining is to get text boxes like you see over here in order to showcase the actual variance and whether there was a hit or a miss. Well, that's actually really simple. I can just hit insert text box, select this over here, and I'll point to this variance. Now let's just center this, make it bold, and we'll make it our gray color. Then I'm gonna hold down control to create a new text box. And this time I'm gonna to point to D48. And we can leave that as such. Let's just hold down control to now remove the actual outline. And let's make sure there's no shape fill as such. Okay, now I can just take this information, copy it, paste it for gross profit, paste it for OpEx, and paste it for net income. And I'll just change the references accordingly. And there we have it, our report is done. So let's just test this out. Let's say I just wanna see January, I'll say 131, 2025. And now you'll see that all of my information just updated. I could also change this to February. And again, my information updates and it fully pulls directly from my actuals and from my budget. Way to go. You're now equipped to build a world-class budget versus actuals dashboard in Excel. But don't just stop there. There are so many more things you can do with Power Query at least 13 of them, like I mentioned in this video right here. So go ahead and check that out. And in the meanwhile, I'm Josh, your CFO guy, and I'll catch you in the next video.